Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, where we have a cracking game for you today, starring Aurorix78, and that name does sound kind of familiar, I think we may have featured him before, in a very unusual tank, which has admittedly been around in World of Tanks for quite some time now, the ELC Even 90. Before we get started, can we just, just look at this thing? because this is one of the weirdest, if not the weirdest looking tank in the game. Aside from the minuscule size and weight of this thing, the turret is off center and the gun isn't even centered in the turret. And it may come as a shock to you, given the nature of the fantasy tank designs that Wargamer have introduced into World of Tanks over the last couple of years or so, but this tank was not the result of some vodka-fueled Wargaming developer's fever dream. This tank actually existed. One prototype and 11 pre-production models were actually built. And in fact, two of the prototypes are on display at the French Tank Museum at Samur. One of them in the children's play area, where you can actually get inside it. It's one of the few tanks at the museum where you can do that. So given that this thing actually exists, what the hell were the designers thinking of with such an unconventional gun and turret configuration. Because, well, every other tank has the turret mounted in the center of the hull and the gun mounted in the center of the turret for a very good reason. It's to absorb the recoil of the gun going off. Without that recoil force sending the turret spinning, or even worse, wrenching the turret clean out of the turret ring. So how the hell does this work? And why would you go for this bizarre turret and gun configuration rather than going with, you know, what works on every other tank in the world. Well, after World War II and during the early 1950s, the French army decided that they wanted... That, by the way, this is what ELC actually stands for. Light Combat Vehicle. It's the abbreviation of the French Engin Léger de Combat, ELC. The even comes from the name of the designer, his name was probably pronounced Evan because he's French, but we all call it Even because that's what it looks like. And the 90 comes from the caliber of the gun fitted. So, ELC Even 90, that's where the name comes from. Although the designs of this tank did not just feature the 90mm gun that we see here in World of Tanks. There was a version with twin 30mm autocannon, both fed from 85 shot clips. And another version with four 120mm recoil S rifles mounted to the turret. And that was the trick. That's how you make something as small as this work with something as big as a 120mm gun. You use recoil S rifles. But how do you make the 90mm gun work? Because that's not recoil S. Well, in the same way that you can make a 76mm gun work on something as small as a British Army scimitar, you use a low velocity round. So there's not an awful lot of barrel pressure for that turret, and by extension the turret ring, to absorb. But that still doesn't explain the weird gun and turret placement. And we'll come on to that in a moment, because Aurora is getting sick and tired of spotting all these targets and his team not shooting at them. So he's taking matters into his own hands. He does only get three shots of 90mm ammunition from this auto loader. And it's a very, very slow reload, by the way, so very much hit and run tactics. Which is exactly what Aurorik's doing. But back to that weird gun and turret configuration, with the turret offset to the left and the gun offset to the right of the turret. Well, you probably noticed that having the turret to the left and the gun to the right means that the gun is mostly actually centre mounted, but it's still going to have a tendency to pull the turret to the right every time it fires, even with a low velocity round. So over time, you can probably expect there to be some significant wear and tear on the turret drive motor and the turret ring itself. So why would you do that instead of just sticking the gun in the middle of the turret and the turret in the middle of the hull and eliminating the problem altogether? And I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to take my best guess, because information on this tank is actually kind of limited. But my working theory is that it's due to the size of the tank, because this is a very, very small tank, but I'm not sure you appreciate just exactly how small it is. We'll come on to that in a moment, because right now Aurora has realised that this flank 
has pretty much already fallen and there's nobody defending the base except for a lone Rheinmetall Borsig and he'll probably survive long enough to get one shot off and no more than one shot before he's killed if he has to spot targets for himself. So, ever the team player, Aurora is coming over to spot some targets for the tank destroyer, although honestly when you see the post-battle results screen he probably shouldn't have bothered because the enemy team are not pushing the advantage on this flank. They look like they've realised that their base is under pressure and they're all turning back to defend the base instead. And also, that Borsig is useless. <laughs> he fires one shot this entire game and does zero damage. Not worth the effort supporting him. So anyway, back to the size of this tank. So we're going to pause proceedings here and I'm going to show you a picture. You ready for this? It's a great picture. I guarantee it's going to come as a surprise to most of you. That is the ELC Even 90 parked next to the iconic and very small Citroen 2CV. When you look at the size of that thing and appreciate just how small it is, you can maybe start to understand why they went for that bizarre gun and turret configuration. Because if you put a 90mm gun with a 90mm gun breech block inside a turret that small, normally you'd have the commander on one side and the gunner on the other side. But I'm not sure there'd be enough space in a turret that small to fit a crewman on either side of the gun. So you have to mount the gun off center in the turret. And if you mount the gun off center in the turret, you pretty much have to mount the turret off center in the hull in order to try to compensate for the recoil forces generated when you fire that gun, even if you are firing a low velocity, high explosive anti-tank shell. And so, looked at from that perspective, it does kind of make sense. Still utterly bizarre, of course, but does make sense in a weird kind of French way. Oh, and in case you're wondering, despite the fact that this tank does feature an autoloader in World of Tanks, it did not have an autoloader in reality. There's no way you could fit an autoloader mechanism inside a turret that small. And it looks like Aurorix gotten a bit sick and tired of his team basically ignoring that Progetto, who's cleaning up this flank, and has decided to take matters into his own hands. Wargaming have taken a couple of liberties with this gun, though. Uh, In-game it features a three-shot autoloader. Now you might be thinking, how the hell could you possibly fit an autoloader into a turret that small, as well as somebody to operate it? But the French engineers did actually manage, and this is really surprising, to fit a five-round autoloader on that 90mm gun, fed from a rotating drum magazine. And it could actually be reloaded from inside the turret, which is pretty impressive when you consider that even the French AMX-13 light tank with its 75mm autoloader had to be reloaded from outside the turret. But they managed to get internal reloading working in this tiny little thing. Although it wouldn't have been easy, so you can probably understand why this thing has such a slow reload. But it had a five-shot autoloader not the three-shot autoloader that it has here in World of Tanks. And that's not the only liberty that Wargaming have taken with this thing, because it was only ever designed to fire high-explosive anti-tank shells. But you can quite clearly see that Auroric has only loaded armour piercing, and 90mm armour piercing just wouldn't have worked on this gun, because it's a low-velocity gun. Oh, he's going to have to take care of that Progetto himself. There it is, nicely done. And the reason why the armour-piercing would never have worked was because armour-piercing ammunition relies largely for its penetration values on the shell velocity. And this is a low-velocity gun. But high-explosive anti-tank ammunition doesn't care about shell velocity. All of the penetration happens at the point of impact, regardless of how long it takes for the shell to get there. So, I mean, I guess... I guess the reason why this thing doesn't have heat ammo as standard is because if it did, Wargaming wouldn't be able to make any money out of selling gold ammunition <laughs> to people playing this tank, so... It all makes sense if you think about it. So, yeah, Wargaming have taken a couple of liberties. It's got a three rather than a five shot drum magazine autoloader. Although, in the real thing, there was a two second delay between shots and it seems to be firing a bit faster than that, so, you know... You win some, you lose some, I suppose. And the reload on this thing with three shots is slow enough. I think the machine does actually work better with a three-shot drum, because the reload on a five-shot drum would be unbearable, and would probably render the tank mostly unplayable. 
He's going after the U. There's 14 here who appears to be on the reload. <laughs> That's bad news for him. One more shot. Got him. And remember, cool tanks don't look at explosions. <laughs> That, of course, just leaves the Scorpion G, who's probably sitting there in the corner of the map thinking, how the hell did it all go so wrong so quickly? And it's a race to see who's going to be the one to kill him. But, well, the Rorix in an ELC even 90. This thing had a top speed of 70 kilometers per hour and a cruising speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Oh, he's catching some airtime. Let's slow it down. <laughs> he's got the target lock. Can he get it? Wait for the thing to steady. Get the turret down. Boom! Headshot. Game over. This really is a great little tank. And did actually exist. One prototype was made. 11 pre-production models. Armed with twin 30mm, a single 90mm and four 120mm recoil S rifles. Somehow, French engineers made this thing work. And they made it work with a crew of two. Not the three that it has in World of Tanks. I mean, in World of Tanks, the commander's got a hard enough job because he's the commander, the radio operator, and the loader. But in reality, he was the gunner as well. <laughs> Why was the project cancelled? Well, I've just given you one reason. The commander was just ridiculously overworked. And also, while it got further along in the production stage than most other French prototypes of the period... It wasn't really capable of being adapted to respond to evolving threats. They basically pushed the design as far as it could possibly go at the prototype stage. France had a very tight military budget and Charles de Gaulle was spending a fortune on the French nuclear program. There was no American funding available for this thing and France had plans to develop a common tank designed with West Germany that would eventually end up in the AMX-30. So basically they'd taken the design as far as it could practically go and there just wasn't money to justify taking it further which is a shame because this was a unique little machine and even though it never went into full production it's definitely earned a page in the annals of French armoured vehicle development and well done to Auroric as well of course let's not forget he's the reason why we're looking at the ELC even 90 today playing the little French tank that doesn't look like it should but definitely could Hope you've enjoyed today's video, I hope you've learned something, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.